Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. In previous video modules, we have covered the law of supply, the law of demand. We've talked about the equilibrium of supply and demand, and we have uh, considered uh, changes in uh, supply and changes in demand. Uh, that is, increases and decreases. We haven't really applied uh, this graphical analysis to real-world situations. What I want to do in this module is to take uh, the implications of, an inc of increased development in China and India and consider how that might affect uh, the domestic markets in, say, uh, the United States or Europe or Canada or elsewhere uh, in the world. We go to a simple supply and demand curve analysis here, and again, let's suppose that this is uh, the oil market. Well, we know that there's going to be an increase in demand for oil because of the development in, in India and China. And if there's an increase in demand, the curve will move from D1 to uh, D2. And when that happens, there's going to be a movement in the equilibrium from point A to point uh, B on the graph. That means that we will have an increase in the uh, price of oil and an increase uh, in the uh, quantity that is uh, produced and so forth. The price of oil is going to go up because if it doesn't go up with that increase in demand, uh, you're going to have a shortage uh, in the market. So the price of oil goes up. That leads to an increase in the price of gasoline. Well, let's consider the impact of the increase in the price of gasoline on the trucking market. Let's just say the trucking market in the United States or, for that matter, uh, in Europe. Well, the increase in the price of gasoline is going to be a cost to the trucking industry, which means that uh, we should have a decrease in the supply of trucking. By that, I mean that the truckers are going to now demand a higher price for any given uh, quantity. The equilibrium is going to move from point A uh, to point B, which is to say that in the United States we should expect, as a result of development in China and India, an increase in the uh, price of, of trucking services, and there's going to be a decrease uh, in the uh, quantity due to uh, the price increase in the price of gasoline. Well, let's suppose, too, we have a uh, situation where people uh, increase uh, their summer driving. If that is the case, then we should again come back to an increase in, uh, in the demand uh, for the good, and that should lead to an increase in the price, too, and uh, de uh, an increase uh, in the uh, quantity. So that should mean oil prices should go up in summer months, and gasoline prices should go up, and uh, uh, so forth. Well, consider that uh, you have a, a a change to a more costly uh, blend of, of gasoline. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, a more costly blend of gasoline means that the supply curve is going to uh, shift uh, backward, and the supply curve is going to shift backward uh, primarily because, again, with the more costly uh, blend of gasoline, uh, producers are going to have to have a higher price at every quantity. The result is going to be that we move from equilibrium A to equilibrium B, and this is going to result in an increase in the price and a cutback uh, in the uh, quantity. Now, notice that we have an increase in summer driving along with increase in cost of blends. Uh, what's that going to do to overall uh, driving? Well, we can, um, we can throw in an increase in the uh, demand, and if we have an increase in demand, the relevant intersection is now C, which means that if you have these two forces going on, increased cost of, of the fuel grade and also increase in demand, the price of the uh, gasoline should indeed be going up. Now, in this particular example, the quantity goes up to Q3. Now, it could be that uh, the quantity actually uh, goes down, and this would be the case if, in fact, 
say the increased cost of fuel were way up there, which means the intersection would be uh, there. And the result would be, uh, well, there's a slight decrease in, no, no, there's a major decrease. I'm sorry. We start off with point uh, A. Anyway, um, uh, the point of the matter is, with an increase in the cost of, of producing gasoline and an increase in demand, you know that the price is going to go up. It's somewhat uncertain as to what's going to happen to the actual quantity of gasoline uh, bought. It depends upon the relative shifts of supply uh, and, and demand. So far, we've, we've considered the increase in demand resulting from greater development in China and India, India on the price of, of gasoline and therefore on the price of, of trucking because the price of gasoline will feed in uh, to the trucking industry as a cost. Well, the increase in price of gasoline can fuel the demand for scooters and for hybrid uh, automobiles. So we can turn to a, a new graph and we can say, let's suppose that this is the demand uh, for uh, hybrid uh, automobiles, like the Honda Civic Hybrid or the Toyota uh, Prius. What's going to happen in this market? Well, because gasoline is more expensive and hybrids are, are um, uh, more fuel e efficient, that is, they get more miles uh, per gallon than, than many other uh, automobiles, we should expect an increase in, in the demand for uh, these hybrids. Uh, what should we expect uh, to happen here? Well, we should expect the price of the hybrids uh, to, um, uh, to rise. And with the price increase, we should expect more hybrids uh, being uh, made available on the uh, domestic uh, market. If this were the scooter market, we should expect uh, both of these things uh, to be uh, the case. Now, what is interesting about the hybrid uh, market is that uh, I went to try to buy a Civic, Civic Hybrid um, just before I made this uh, video module. And uh, the Civic Hybrid is now uh, being marked up uh, well above the uh, list price from the manufacturer. In, some, in fact, in Southern California, uh, the list price for hybrids is about uh, 4000 above the manufacturer uh, suggested uh, retail price. That means that the hybrid is something like um, uh, six to eight thousand uh, dollars more than the regular uh, Honda uh, Civic without the uh, battery-powered uh, uh, option. Uh, it means that uh, since the hybrid gets only about 25 uh, percent more uh, miles per gallon on the road, uh, that the price of the Civic hybrid has risen to the point uh, that uh, uh, someone would have to run uh, that hybrid something over 300,000 uh, miles in order for the hybrid to cover the, the added cost. Uh, why people are willing to uh, pay that much more for a hybrid is, is frankly uh, beyond me. Uh, that is to say, a supply and demand curve analysis can help us understand some aspects of uh, markets uh, and people's behavior, but uh, we can't always understand uh, all behavior through uh, supply and demand uh, curve analysis. Uh, thank you for being with me.